No, no, man. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. I'll, I'll change the intro. I swear. Oh, don't worry. It, uh, it won't hurt a bit. Let's make a computer build video, boys. <laughs> so, it is now time that your wonderful, neighborhood, friendly, tech superhero, Two Wheels Use Tech, throws his little hat in the ring when trying to bring you a budget, affordable gaming PC during this horrible GPU crisis that we are going through currently. If you had watched my last video, which is basically me ranting and raving about some poor choices made in PC building videos that I did not necessarily agree with, this is kind of my answer to that, or at least a, a solution to the problem, where I put together a system that I actually would recommend with potentially more evidence behind it actually working so that the people that do want to buy something and get into building a gaming computer on a relatively low budget have an option that has the two wheels use tech stamp of approval. But I should, I guess, throw out a little disclaimer here. This isn't going to be an in-depth guide of every single part that you should be purchasing. We will go over what's in this build in a rough template for a whole computer system but the video is going to mainly focus on the CPU and the GPU paired together since they are the two kind of core components for a gaming computer and they're going to be the most expensive parts that you are potentially looking at. That's why we're just going to look at the pairing and what they can do and then loosely recommend parts around that to finish off the build. So the first order of business and a very important topic to cover is who exactly this computer is built for since there are a variety of price ranges and things that you might need a computer to do that this may or may not check off of that little list you got going on. So, to sum it up, this computer is basically for anybody who has a very tight budget and wants to just get into PC gaming and isn't incredibly worried about trying to set up a bill that they can upgrade in the future. This might be good for a relative or a family member who's trying to get in a low budget maybe someone in the younger ages, maybe like a preteen or something like that, simply just to let them experiment with PC gaming, get into it and see if that's what they ultimately want to invest a lot of money in. And then you can probably build an entirely new system after this. But right now it is simply just a budget entry level computer that will serve you well for just getting into it and then allow you to go from there whether or not you want to spend more money on another computer or potentially upgrading this which i wouldn't exactly recommend so then what is this computer capable of doing because that is also another very important question and the way that i try and phrase it is that it is a perfect fortnite gaming pc something that you can play kind of popular titles with varying degrees of graphical fidelity. A lot of the benchmarks that I ran were based on kind of esports titles or easier titles or battle royale titles that a lot of people play on their consoles and it's in a similar price bracket, so it kind of levels out. So if you wanted to do some high refresh rate gaming on an esports title or a battle royale title such as Fortnite, CSGO, Valorant, Overwatch, all those kind of similar level of titles, then you can easily push this hardware to get you up into the 120 FPS range if that's what you're looking for. You will have to drop some settings, you might have to tinker with a little bit lower resolution, but some people do that as a preference, which those people are maniacs, but all the power to them. But if you're looking at playing maybe low or medium settings on the 1080p, then this is also a very good system for managing that. You're definitely not going to be running Red Dead Redemption 2 on Ultra. That would be absolutely horrific to watch, but you could potentially play some AAA titles at a lower resolution and lower setting, but if you wanted to just have a better experience with some of those esports titles I mentioned earlier, then you could bump up to medium, maybe high settings and have a 60 FPS experience, which is perfectly acceptable for the majority of people. But enough ranting about what this can do and why you may or may not want it. We'll actually get into the parts and some benchmark numbers so that my lovely voice can stop trying to explain something that's 
much easier to explain with numbers. So the CPU and GPU combo that I'm going to be covering today is the Intel chip i5-3470 and the graphics card is an AMD R9-280X. Going over the i5-3470, this is certainly an aging CPU that may not have the best life expectancy at this point, so keep that in mind, but if you're looking for a $20 CPU, which is near impossible to find in the new market, then the i5-3470, priced at about $20 on the used market, is a phenomenal price if you're in that price point. Obviously, there are going to be people who want to argue with me saying you should just invest an extra $30 or $40 and go with something newer, but if you're stuck on this budget and you can't wiggle money around, a $20 i5-3470 is actually a phenomenal deal for the value that you're getting. Obviously, with this being an i5 chip and being a little bit older, it isn't going to have any huge thermal limitations or any high wattage usage that you need to be terrified of. It's a nice, steady chip for the money that will not limit the R9-280X and a lot of the titles that we're testing. And that's basically all that you need. If you can find a better chip or a comparable chip, at a slightly lower budget, then go ahead and do that. It's just the i5-3470 from what I have done and tested, I've seen is a very easily available chip that holds up with this build, and so that's why I went with that particular chip. Moving on to the R9-280X, I have a little bit of a disclaimer rant that I'm sure I'm going to go on, but it is an older aging GPU, as obviously all of these parts are going to be since we are going for a very budget build, but the R9-280X, which is on par with the GTX 1050 Ti in most performance scenarios, is a very great pick for a budget such as this, because if you look to buy a GTX 1050 Ti at this point, you're looking to spend around $200, give or take a little bit there, but picking up an R9-280X will run you about $100, maybe a little more or a little less. So for half the price and one minor downside, you're getting GTX 1050 Ti performance with an older aging car that just requires a little bit more power. So what is that downside that I mentioned before? Because I'm trying to be as transparent as possible with these parts. Well, the R9-280X runs with 3GB of VRAM versus that 1050 Ti that I mentioned earlier has 4GB of VRAM. This may not seem like a huge problem, but when looking at a bunch of the games that I usually benchmark, a lot of them have a VRAM limiter or a VRAM warning, which basically says that if you don't have this much VRAM that the game is asking for, it will automatically reduce some settings to make sure everything works smoothly. Games that I ran into that had this problem, a big one being Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone. When you're running Warzone, it asks for a bit more VRAM than running multiplayer, and if you try and set the settings as low as possible and still run at the 1080p resolution, then you're already over that VRAM budget of 3 gigabytes. Other games, which are more AAA titles, such as Red Dead Redemption 2, will also do this, but you can lower the resolution and lower settings to make this work. But it's one of those things where if it's a problem now, and games and titles are only going to ask for more VRAM in the future, it's going to be a problem that you're going to run into time and time again. So this would be the only caveat that I would say is rather important to deciding whether or not you might want to use this card for a build. It works perfectly for your Fortnite games and your CSGO and things of that nature, and if that's all that you're going to play and that's all you really care about, then this is really a mute point for you. But if you're looking at potentially playing higher graphical fidelity games that require 4 gigabytes of VRAM, then that is going to be an issue for you. So that's ultimately up to you, and you can do a little bit of research to figure out if that's going to affect you or not. But it's worth mentioning, since it is a problem with this combination. So that covers the $150 combo that I was mentioning earlier. You can find that R9-280X for around $100 or a little bit more, and you can find that CPU for around $20, a little bit more. I always kind of hike the prices up for my thumbnails and titles and whatnot, so that way if you can't find a deal, and let's say you have to pay a little bit over than I am averagely seeing them go for, then you can still fit within the budget. But it's rather easy if you do a little bit of part hunting 
to find the R9 280X for under $100 and picking up that 3470 for potentially lower than 20. So you could be seeing this combo at around $120 versus $150 that I allotted. But I'm going to quickly go over what's in this build and what I paired with those two parts so that you can kind of get a relative idea of what I would recommend and the price points that you should be looking for. So for the motherboard, I went with the Asus P8H61, basically any LGA 1155 socket motherboard that works with the chip and is a relatively good price. Anything around $50 or less will work just fine. You could go the Dell Optiplex motherboard route, but there are some minor inconveniences with that. So I would stick with using a DIY motherboard that is built for putting into a case, it just makes everything a lot easier. Then again, to keep the budget down as much as possible, I went with eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM for about $20. You could potentially get this for less, but again, I'm trying to make sure that I'm using a safe amount to pay for each of these parts so that if you do have to pay a little bit more, we're not going over budget. And of course, I'm sure people will argue that I should have gone with 16 gigabytes of RAM, but since this is a kind of extreme budget build and we're trying to squeeze every dollar out and 16 gigabytes of RAM is kind of a luxury, though most tech people will disagree with me on that, we went with eight gigabytes just to make sure that everything is relatively paired together. <laughs> then I followed up with a SanDisk 240 gigabyte SSD as our boot drive in a small storage pool, which runs at about $30, somewhere around there. And that allows you to maybe install one or two of your favorite games onto the SSD without having to worry about secondary storage. Then this is one of the parts that I'll have to kind of leave up to you, but with the build that I built, I picked up this HP Omen Obelisk case plus power supply for $60. It's a 500 watt power supply with all the connectors that I need, and the case is relatively good looking for a pre-built case. So a lotting that I spent, or you should spend, about $30 on the power supply and about $30 on the case, that comes out to equal about $60. You can find very cheap $30 cases online new. You can also do some Facebook or Craigslist searching to potentially find a case within $30 that might be a little bit more appealing. But that's kind of the suggestion I have. If you find deals like this, that's great. But ultimately, that's kind of the budget you should be going for for the case and the power supply. So that ultimately brings the cost of this computer to $300. Again, there are things that you might want to change based on your preferences. This is just how I put it together and what I would loosely recommend that you follow. But really, this video is about that $150 GPU-CPU combo so that you can just get gaming during this fantastic GPU crisis that we're all dealing with. So now I have ranted about who this computer might be for and the parts and the price that you can be looking at. So let's go over the performance of the machine. So there you have it folks, there is my two cents, my two wheels two cents of uh, what kind of budget computer you could potentially be building right now just to get some PC gaming under your belt. Hopefully maybe in the near future we'll see prices go down and 
$300 builds can be much more viable than this, but this is what I got, and this is the recommendations that I do have. Ultimately, there are a few things that could be changed or tweaked depending on your situation, and there are certain things that if you have a little bit of a higher budget or if your budget is more variable than having a set 300, you could change a few things to get a better experience overall. But that will bring this video to a close. If you found what you were looking for or you liked the video, then hit that like button. If you thought I rambled too much and the parts that I picked were absolute garbage, hit that dislike button. And if you want to see more PC builds, flipping advice, and all that fun stuff on this channel, then hit that subscribe button. I will try my best to keep you around. But without further ado, I have an announcement. So we recently broke 2,000 subscribers, and I had the small project going on in the background of starting up a Discord server for, I guess, my subscribers. So if you feel like you need some nerdy computer flipping nerds to talk to, and you have Discord, then there will be a Discord link down in the description so that you can join our lovely community that basically just talks about how awful GPU prices are currently. But with that out of the way, have a good day, guys.